there is a mutual fascination between man and creatures in the wild. But it is a delicate balance which filmmakers must learn to preserve. Wildlife filmmakers often risk their lives for their best shot. Getting intimate with cheetahs is cheeky, if not downright foolish. What if a cheetah wants to get intimate with them? A two-metre high steel frame could make an excellent vantage point to spot his favourite prey in the tall grass, the Thompson's gazelle. Only when the hunter is back on the ground can the cameraman cut to the chase. Zero to 45 miles an hour in just two seconds. With top speeds of well over 60 miles an hour, the cheetah is master of the African flat. This is filmmaking heaven with a long lens for safety. Filmmakers aren't the only ones who have to learn their business. In the Ambazali National Park in East Africa, this young elephant is eager to stand out from the crowd. His fully deployed ears and sunken head show promise of true grit. Fortunately, his family seem happy to give him free reign and don't interfere themselves. The cardinal rule of filming on the African plains, never stray too far from your vehicle. The same rule holds for the frozen tundra of northern Canada. In the Arctic Circle, cameramen must be specialists and their equipment up to the job. The tundra buggy may serve these tourists well, but die-hard filmmakers must expose themselves to their subject, one that's no less impressive than the cheetahs of the African plains, the polar bear. They may be slower than cheetahs, but they're infinitely stronger, the largest carnivore on land. And they're reputed to be the only bear that considers human beings as prey. Even though feeding these bears is now banned, the giants of the north can smell a warm-blooded mammal, like a cameraman, from miles downwind. As usual, the problem for the crew is how to get up close and personal with their subject. With a powerful enough lens, the crew can leave the vehicle and film in safety. The 
bears' rough footpads give them purchase on the snowy ground. Well, most of the time. When winter smothers the Arctic light and many polar bears hibernate, cold weather filmmakers move to the opposite pole. Here you can work 24 hours a day. What a paradise. If only we had a workable script, because how do you shoot a rarely filmed leopard seal hunting penguins underwater at full speed? That's the dress rehearsal film from above. Now for the real thing. A special underwater camera called a pole cam helps, and that dry suit is warmer than you might think. This friendly Weddell seal provides some amusing pictures. but a pole cam would stand little chance against the leopard seal. The only solution is to get down there with them. Underwater filming is a specialized skill, and you need plenty of air to film the leopard seal because you will breathe a lot. The underwater stage is set, both parties sizing each other up. If you think this leopard seal makes a good swimming partner, you're dead wrong. His one-inch canine teeth have recently killed a British scientist in these very waters. The problem is the seal is not hunting. It's got too much time for the cameraman. This was not in the script. An experienced cameraman knows not to push his luck. The script definitely needs some more work before the next day's shooting. Today's task is to find a leopard seal that's too busy to pay attention to the cameraman. The opportunity presents itself quickly, but will it make comfortable viewing for nature lovers? Surely this will be censored, discarded onto the cutting room floor. Filmmaking is full of surprises. 
Rather than being aggressive, this leopard seal brings the cameraman a gift. Even if the pictures seem cruel, cameramen are trained to keep filming whatever the situation. What constitutes poor footage one day may come in handy the next, whether the cameraman's being bothered by a leopard seal or by a dugong. These gentle mammals, sometimes known as sea cows, are related to the manatee and live off the northern coasts of Australia and the South Pacific. This one from an island near the archipelago of Vanuatu has been living alone since its mother died. So its primitive brain confuses the diver with its own kind. Not only is the dugong extremely sociable, it's also looking for a mate. Taken completely by surprise, the cameraman panics in the face of one of the most passive mammals on the planet. The cameraman soon realizes he's overreacted and offers the lonely dugong a little reciprocation. Sadly, the dugong has since passed on, not with a broken heart, but with old age.